There are places on this planet where nature's power is absolute. The deep ocean. Here, hurricanes are born. Rogue waves the size of office buildings roam free. And the darkness is eternal. This is a realm not meant for mankind. Yet beneath this chaos, miles below the churning surface, lies a prize. Pockets of energy. The fossilized remains of ancient life, trapped for millions of years under immense pressure. The black blood of the Earth. Our modern world has an unquenchable thirst for it. But how do you conquer such a hostile world? How do you build a city of steel in a place where storms can tear ships apart? How do you drill miles into the Earth's crust from a platform that never stops moving? The very idea seems like an act of defiance against the gods of the sea. The answer is not found in the ocean. It is forged on land in colossal shipyards with fire and steel. To fight a monster, you the must first build one of your own. into the midnight zone, passing strange bioluminescent creatures like the con This cutaway reveals the geological formations deep beneath the seabed. The animation shows immense pressure, represented by heavy, downward pointing arrows, acting on the rock layers. The war against the abyss begins with the creation of the beast's body. On land, in shipyards the size of small towns, giant sections of a deep water platform's hull are forged. For a spar platform like Perdido, it is a colossal steel cylinder, longer than a football field, a hollow titan designed to float upright. Its steel walls, several inches thick, are welded together from giant pre-curved plates. Each weld is a critical point of failure, meticulously scanned with ultrasonic equipment, because at 8,000 feet below the sea, there is no room for a second chance. For a semi-submersible, it is a set of massive pontoons and columns, the legs that will one day brace against the fury of the waves. Thousands of welders work around the clock in a shower of sparks, fusing thousands of tons of steel into a single, unbreakable shell. This structure is not just built to be strong, it is designed to be a fortress against corrosion, coated with specialized paint and protected by an array of sacrificial anodes designed to decay over decades. Saving the steel itself. This is the foundation. The part of the monster that will spend its life in a constant battle with the sea. While the body is being forged, another city is being born nearby, the topside. This is not just a deck. It is a multi-story, self-sufficient industrial complex and a hotel for hundreds of workers. It houses the towering derrick of the drilling rig, the complex maze of pipes and vessels of the processing equipment, the roaring power generators, and the living quarters. Every module is a self-contained unit, a power station, a chemical plant, a control center, built on the ground and then lifted into place like colossal Lego bricks. The level of integration is mind-boggling. Miles of pipes and cables must align perfectly between these modules. Weighing up to 50,000 tons, it is an entire factory, squeezed onto a footprint of steel. Every pipe, every wire, every emergency shutdown valve is built and rigorously tested here, on the safety of solid ground before it is sent to face the unforgiving ocean.
Lower slowly, watch the piping. Almost there, bring it left a foot. Then comes the moment of truth, the mating of giants. In a spectacular feat of heavy lifting, the entire 50,000 ton topside must be joined with its hull. For some designs, this involves the world's largest crane vessels, twin-hulled behemoths that can lift the entire to topside to in a single, right breathtaking maneuver. For others, it's an even more audacious process called float over. The topside is loaded onto a massive barge, which is then carefully navigated between the legs of the okay, semi-submersible hull. By ballasting the hull Copy and de-ballasting the barge, the topside is gently and precisely lowered into All place. Right, down, this is a fresh. slow, agonizingly tense ballet of immense weight, a process that can only Thumbs happen up, in the calmest load. of seas. A few millimeters of misalignment, a sudden swell, could spell disaster. For hours, the two colossal pieces are brought together. The city is placed upon the body of the Titan. The monster is now whole. A steel island, born on land, but destined for the sea. How do you move a skyscraper across an ocean? The journey to the deep water oil field is a monumental challenge in itself. The entire platform, now a single colossal entity, is loaded onto the back of the world's most powerful heavy lift vessels or pulled by a fleet of ocean-going tugboats. This is not a simple tow. A team of meteorologists and naval architects works around the clock, plotting a course that avoids potential storms and rogue waves. The stability of the massive structure during its voyage is calculated down to the single degree. It is a slow, majestic procession, often taking weeks to travel thousands of miles across the open sea. This is a man-made mountain, navigating the waves, a testament to humanity's ambition to place its creations in the most remote and hostile corners of the planet. The destination is reached. A patch of empty ocean, miles deep. Now the most dangerous phase begins, taming the abyss. For a spar platform, the colossal cylinder is flooded with water at one end, causing it to flip from horizontal to vertical in a controlled, terrifying maneuver called the upending. It becomes a floating skyscraper, most of its body submerged. For a semi-submersible, a fleet of robotic submarines, ROVs, descends into the crushing darkness, dragging and securing dozens of colossal anchor chains to the seabed. The monster is now chained to the abyss, ready to withstand a hundred-year storm.
platform is secure. The war now turns downwards. From the rig floor, a drill string, miles long, begins its journey into the deep. It passes through the crushing cold and darkness of the water, then bites into the seabed. Guided by advanced sensors and powerful motors, the drill bit grinds through layer after layer of rock, a journey into the Earth's ancient past. Finally, after weeks of drilling, it reaches its target. The reservoir is pierced, and for the first time, under immense natural pressure, the black blood of the Earth surges upwards. It travels miles to the surface, arriving on the platform as a raw, untamed torrent. First oil, it is the moment of victory the culmination of billions of dollars and millions of hours of human effort. The monster has won its battle. It now stands as a lone sentinel, a man-made island of light in the vast, dark ocean, tirelessly pumping the energy that fuels our world. A symbol of our relentless drive to conquer the most hostile environments on Earth. The war against the abyss never truly ends. It is merely a hard-won truce. Within these ancient layers, we find the remnants of prehistoric worlds, from the earliest marine life to the great beasts of the Ice Age. The animation shows the crude oil, under its own pressure, rushing up the drill pipe, a journey of miles in a matter of minutes. It's beautiful! We finally did it! Look at that flow, man. Yes. Yeah. We did it. Woo. After all that work, we finally got it done.